Good morning and welcome to White Oak Pond Christian Church. We're so glad that you've chosen this as your place of worship on this Sunday morning. It is a beautiful wintry day. I always like it when the snow comes down and covers the, 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 the trees and the grass and, and the, the roads are still safe. Um, but it is a beautiful winter wonderland outside. But it is warm in here and we pray that it's warm where you are. And we are grateful that you're a part of this community today. As we gather a couple of um, announcements, things that are going on in the life of the congregation. First, we are gonna continue to, to clean up the sanctuary as we are finishing with the repairs that needed to happen. Um, we're getting some painting taken care of, we're replacing lights, and if you'd like to help, we're inviting you to call the church. Um, we're gathering today at 1230 to move a few things around, um, but then, other things can be done on your own time. So call the church and we'll set it up with um, the th everything that you would need to come down and to help out. Morning prayers will continue to happen um, in person at 9 a.m. and also on Facebook Live. Um, once we're uh, able to and the, the sanctuary is finished, we'll move morning prayers into the sanctuary. But um, until that time, we'll continue to meet here in the gathering area and we socially distance and um, gather together at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, our main worship time at 1030 will continue to be virtually. Um, and even when we're able to move back in person, once we feel like that is safe, um, we'll continue to have it virtually because that's the commitment that we have um, to all of our people. So no matter where you are, um, no matter how you engage with us, uh, we'll continue to be virtually um, for the foreseeable future. So Grateful to have you here this morning virtually and as we move forward. It is good to be a part and to be together as well on this Sunday morning. I'd invite you to join your hearts and minds together as we prepare for worship with music. Thank you so much, Lizzie. That was beautiful. I really appreciate you preparing us for worship this morning. Our call to worship is one that we all can participate in. You'll find it on your screen, and I'd invite you to join with me wherever you are in saying it and joining our voices together. The voice of the Lord, strong and mighty, powerful full of majesty. It calls to us, calling across the water. The voice of the Lord breaks forth. It gives us strength and blessing, causing us to shout, glory to the name of the Lord. 
It is important that we share where we have seen God this last week. So grateful. I think you guys get to see this last week. I didn't know if you had or not, but uh, appreciated Ben sharing this photo of where he has seen God in his time and uh, sharing that. Where have the rest of you all seen God this last week? Out there. Yes, yeah, Cindy, go ahead. I uh, work for Christian Appalachian Project. And this past week, I met a new long-term volunteer. There's a class of them that have come in in the midst of all of this with all of the falderall everybody has to go through. They're still coming and serving. And it was very touching. Mm, that's, it is important when we can find that, uh, that continuality of, of things and continuity. Thank you so much. Appreciate it when people are giving. Other places where you all have seen God this last week. Anybody else out there? Let's see. Well, I definitely, uh, yes, go ahead, Gene. You'll have to unmute yourself. Try it there. Can't do it. That's all right. Well, it's, uh, I definitely am grateful for the time of rest and relaxation with my family. That was a place where I was able to see God. And there was definitely, um, and I was able to spend some time with colleagues and connecting with friends as well. Um, and if uh, hopefully you guys are finding ways to reach out either over the phone or through a, you know, a FaceTime or, or whatever Google meet, but um, I pray that you guys are finding ways to do that. It definitely tends to my soul whenever I have that opportunity and hopefully you all are doing that as well. So keep doing the work that you're doing in that way. Yes, Kathy, go ahead. You need to unmute yourself and then you can. There you go. I uh, had a birthday this past week and I'm really grateful for everybody that remembered and sent me cards and said happy birthday on Facebook and that kind of thing. So I want everybody to know I really appreciate it. That is so wonderful. Well, happy birthday. That is terrific. That is terrific. Grateful also to teachers and, and folks that are serving in that way. It's definitely where we see God. All right. Well, um, you guys missed this from last week and the fact that you uh, did not get to hear Cindy and I sing. And so one of the things that definitely tends to my soul is singing, whether it be um, in the car or whether it be, um, you know, just where, you know, singing around um, just in my office or whatever. Um, and so it was good that Cindy found this piece and I'm grateful she nudged me and uh, we were able to record this. And uh, so definitely enjoy this morning, this gift, this offering from Cindy and Laura and I. you 
was fun. Thanks, Laura and Cindy, for being a part of that. So great we could share that. As we gather on this Sunday morning, there are those within our community and also in the larger community that we're thinking about and praying about this morning. First off, today we will celebrate the leadership of 2021. We will um, install leaders um, on the board. We will install new deacons and also will install new elders. So we serve on our deacons and elders serve on a rotating three year cycle, but we do have new ones for this year and we are excited about um, those new names. We continue to pray for them and for, and as we come to this time next, after this prayer, we will install those officers. And so um, we're thinking about them. We continue to remember Gentry and Bill and um, Catherine's niece, Jennifer, Jean and Desiree, Leora and Matthew and Heidi. These are all names of folks that uh, we've been thinking about for a while. Um, we know that many are struggling in different ways from different things. And so we, we pray for each of them by name and know that as they're going through difficult things, we recognize that they don't have to go through these things alone, that we are with them and holding them close in our prayers. We also recognize that, um, that we have a connection to our church. Her name was Anna, and she passed away this last week under hospice care, friends of Richard's. And so we pray for, um, for those friends and family around Anna this coming week. We recognize also that, the, that there is joy and there is hope in the um, vaccinations that are happening in Madison County and in the state and around the world with um, in the fight against COVID-19. And so we're grateful for that science that continues to, um, to make a difference and to, um, 
to be a powerful um, tool in the fight against this deadly disease. We continue to pray for our front, frontline workers, our doctors and nurses, technicians that are there to care for those who are sick and those that are there to help and care for um, all of us in the midst of this, whether it be something COVID related or other things that we know that folks continually deal with. We pray for those that are dealing um, with grief and pain. With over 350,000 deaths just within the U.S., we recognize that so many are hurting and so many have lost so much. We also recognize that this has taken a toll on our, um, our community by isolating so many. And so we pray for those who are going through difficult times, for the hardship, for the feelings of loneliness, and for those that are in these places of darkness. We are grateful for teachers and for folks that are reaching out, but we also recognize that this is a difficult time. And so we pray for those who are going through that. Um, let's see. We've got um, Chastity Morrow is also a name that um, is just put on the chat list. And so I will, um, I will add that to the prayer list as well. Any others out there that we need to add? Other names? Okay. Yes, go ahead, Karen. There you go. Um, uh, just a, I have a couple actually. Um, just an update on Leora. She had surgery last week to. Um, when they operate on her stomach, they had to cut her muscles. They reattached her muscles. And so she was in the hospital for a few days, but apparently she's recovering well. She's home after two days and everything. I found out yesterday when I went to see them that um, Carol and her husband, actually, and grandparents actually have COVID. Um, I think today is the last day for the husband <clears throat> for his quarantine. She ended up in the hospital. I don't know if it's, she has other health issues. So I don't know if it's because of COVID or a combination of whatever else that she's going through. And then I got a chat, uh, text from my ex-husband this morning that I, the grandmother, Helen, fell Friday and she's sore, but she's not, they don't think that she damaged her hip surgery, but then she fell again this morning at 4.30 and she's now back in the hospital. We don't know the status of her. Okay. It breaks my heart because they're such nice people, all of them. And um, yeah. you were his grandparents, what, were their, what are their names? Her, her name is Carol, and honestly, I don't know the husband's name. Yeah. I hardly ever talk to him. I don't see him, so I just talk to Carol. But just the grandparents of Leora, they, they're, I, think, I think she's supposed to come home tomorrow. Okay. So I, I think the COVID part is over, but I don't know what else. But it's yeah. just sad. They've had such a rough time. Yeah. To that list, so. Yes, um, go ahead, Joyce. Uh, uh, Douglas Shira, uh, who has COVID. Okay. All right. We will. Uh, I think. All right. Okie doke, we'll add him. All right, any others? Just kind of looking through here. All right. Seeing no others, uh, let us pause and go to God in prayer. Almighty God, one who holds us as a parent. Grace is the gift which flows to us from your heart. Joy is the seed planted deep within our souls. We pray that it might blossom into lives of service to all. Recognizing this gift of grace and joy, we call to you, O Lord, of love. 
God, as known through Jesus, you emerged from the baptism's waters to embrace us in your hopes. You take our fears from us, you toss them aside, and you lead us into your kingdom. You shine the light which brings us out of despair and shadow. And so we, lo we know you, O Lord, as one who brings life. God, the Spirit, you are the wind upon the water. You move among us, sweeping aside our petty pride and offering us the gifts of humanity and servanthood. You whisper of your yearning for peace and reconciliation until it silences our angry voices and unclenches our fists. And we hear that voice, sometimes small, sometimes mighty and powerful. We hear that voice calling out to us, peace. God, we see you in so many places, so many ways around us. We see you made manifest in our friends, in our church family, in our interactions, in the science, in the medicine. And we are grateful. And still, O Lord, O Lord, our hearts hurt. For in the midst of the joy of love that we have with so many, in the midst of the connections that we have with friends, and seeing those that have stepped forward to serve, to feed the hungry, to clothe those who need it, and to call out a word of peace in this world, we recognize that, that there are still those, those moments that, that weigh heavy on our hearts. So many are hurting this day, and so we call out their names. We say the names of Helen and Jennifer, Gentry and Bill, Jean and Carol, Chastity and Douglas, Desiree and Leora, Matthew, Heidi, and the friends of Anna. These names, O oh Lord, they represent people, lives, and we send forth our prayers, our, the feelings of our hearts, our hopes and our dreams, so that they might know that they are not alone during this difficult time. As they struggle, as they hurt, as they work and as they grieve. God, we as a community as well are struggling. We feel the pull to divide us. And we recognize at the same time, O oh Lord, that you are continuing to speak to us, calling us to a place of unity. You remind us that we are your children and that your invitation, your call to us is one that we might reach out with love and grace and mercy and compassion and come together to create a world that looks more and more like you each and every day. So strengthen us, O oh Lord, in our prayers, that we might be your hands and feet to those who are hurting, that we might be the mouths that call out words of justice and hope and peace. God, be with us this week helping us to be the people that we need to be in this world and that you might hold us all together in your loving arms. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things, the Prince of Peace. Amen.
One of the things that I'm continually grateful for has been our um, general minister and president. She has had wonderful words for us, and she actually brought forward some words for the new year, um, but they were, um, they're lengthy. And so um, I'm going to invite you to go to the church's Facebook page or to go on YouTube and to search those out. Um, well, I'll be posting those this afternoon, but um, they were a little lengthy. And so um, we, I'm inviting you to check those out um, in your own time. And, uh, but she has some wonderful words for us um, during this new year and grateful for her voice um, each and every week, but uh, wanted to point you all to those um, at some time at your own convenience this week. At this time, we come to the point where we can install our 2021 leadership, our deacons, elders, and board leadership for the new year. Um, one of the things that I think is so important is recognizing that we have roles to play within this congregation and within our community. And for those that have accepted the call to stand forward and to say, I will go and I will lead, I'm grateful. Does not mean that these leaders are perfect in any way. It just means that they have accepted the role to step forward and it is, it is an important one, and I'm grateful for each and every one of you. These are the list of our um, deacons and elders and board leadership for the next um, that have been that are being brought on for this next year. Um, so our deacons are either being brought on to fulfill a um, one year call, uh, one year kind of. Um, post or the others are on for three years. And so we, I invite you where you are to, um, to join with me in taking the, um, this kind of, uh, this installation as we go, the induction. We'll start with our deacons. The church has prayerfully considered your gifts of ministry for service in its diaconate and has duly called you to be a deacon. Each of you has accepted this call as God's intention for your life. In the light of your calling to this responsibility, do you reaffirm your faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? Do you seek the peace, unity, and purity of the church? And do you, in acceptance of the office of deacon in this congregation, promise faithfully to perform all the duties pertaining to your calling? If you do, will you respond by saying, I do, God being my helper? I do. I do. I do. I do. And may God be my helper. God. Thank you all. An eldership has been established through which those named of the elders serve together in shared responsibility of the company <clears throat> and leadership. Together they serve as colleagues of the minister who represent the reconciling work of Christ and the whole church in the present day. The church, with prayer and deliberation, affirmed your call to the eldership of this congregation. Each of you have accepted this call as God's intention for your life. We therefore now proceed to install you to the office of elder. In the light of your calling to this new responsibility, do you reaffirm your faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and do you promise to follow him and to seek to do and to bear with his will all the days of your life? Do you believe that the word of God and the Hebrew scriptures and the New Testament discerned under the guidance of the Holy Spirit is the supreme and authority for the faith and conduct to all people? Do you commit yourself to the well-being of the church 
and through God's grace fulfill a servant ministry of care and concern for all of the church members? If you do, will you respond by saying, I do? I do. I do. May, may the Lord God bless you and give all of you the grace to keep these vows. <clears throat> Finally, we reach out to those that are gathering as our new leadership for the board. We are so grateful for Cindy and for Ben, for Mike and for Rachel, for their agreeing to bring their gifts to this place. We pray for you, and we are grateful for the vision that you will bring in this next year. I ask you, is it your intent to bring yourselves wholly, authentically, and with humbleness to these roles as chair, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary for the new year? If this is your pledge, will you respond by saying, I do. I do. I do. Thank you so much, all of you. So grateful for that. All right. One of the things that we get to do is, um, is that uh, with new elders is that we do a laying on of hands from the past elders and those that have been elders emeritus. And so once we're able to safely be back in the sanctuary and do that, we will have a time because Rachel Carney is a um, new elder to our congregation. And we are grateful for her stepping forward and answering this call. What a beautiful gift she brings, and we look forward to, um, to that laying on of hands and the ordination of her as elder when we can. At this time, I invite the children to gather around and to talk a little bit about water. So today, we're also celebrating what's called Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. And this Sunday, we talk about what it's like to be baptized. Now, here's the thing, is that if we were in the sanctuary, we could point to where the baptismal was, and, and we could maybe talk about it, and some of you could think about maybe when you have the chance to be baptized. We will find a time when we're able to come back in which we'll open the, open the baptism up and fill it up with water, and we will again move into those waters and baptize those who seek to take those next steps in life. And I wonder, I wonder right now, if you've thought about this, if you've ever thought about what it might like be like to be baptized. So have any of you all thought about what it might like be like to be <laughs> baptized at the church? Have you ever wondered about that? One of the things when I was a kid that I wondered is I always wondered, was the water cold? And I'll tell you something. I did a baptismal one time, and it was in the middle of winter, and the custodian had filled up the baptistry the night before, and the hot water heater did not work. And I waded into the waters of baptism myself, and the water was probably about 50 to 60 degrees. Oh, my goodness gracious. It was a shock, I have to say. And when the young man came in that, needed to be that wanted to be baptized, and he waded into the water, his eyes got really big, and he was sitting there shivering. <laughs> and we're in front of the entire congregation. And, and I, I put him back down into the waters and I pulled him back out and he, is, I, and he looked at me and I said, are you okay? And he goes, it's a little cold. So yes, sometimes the water is cold, but the beautiful thing is, is that 
the, the, the leadership of White Oak Pond has been smart enough to install a heater. So the water doesn't get quite so cold here at Pond. So I'm grateful for that. Some of the other questions <clears throat> people have asked before that they've wondered about is, when can I do that? Well, that's a, that's a really good question too. Is there a certain age that we begin to think about whether or not we should be baptized. Now, what, there's no set age as to when it happens, but one of the things that we think about is baptism is a choice that you have between you and God and also between you and the church. So as you begin to think about baptism, as you begin to think about what it might be like to go into the waters of baptisms and make this pledge to God, to live your life as Jesus' follower, when you begin to think about that, that's a good time to talk to somebody about it. First, you can maybe talk to a grandparent or to a parent, or maybe you want to talk to me or one of the elders at the church, and you can just begin by talking with them and saying, you know, I've been thinking about wanting to be baptized. And when that happens, that's when we begin to talk. And we begin to pray to God and we begin to talk to those people within the church. And then as we work together, we begin to find the time that's right for you. And so if you have those questions, please let me know. Let one of the elders know. Talk to a family member and they can share about it. Finally, <clears throat> one of the things that, um, that some people ask is... Um, is will I be different after it happens? And you know what? Everybody has a different story. So this week, I'm going to ask you, to do all, you all to do something. And that is talk to people within your family. Give them a call. If you got to, you know, that's the beautiful thing about this. You can FaceTime them and you can ask somebody in your family, whether it be your parents or maybe one of your brothers or sisters, or maybe it's a grandparent or a good friend of yours and call them and say, can you tell me about what it was like to be baptized? There are some people in this church who were baptized right in the sanctuary here. Some people can tell you the story about what it was like to be baptized um, in another place. And there are some people that are on this today that have baptized other people, and they can tell you about it. I bet they've got some fun stories as well about, um, about times when the water was cold or also when they had a very meaningful one. I'm going to tell a story like that in the sermon today about a baptism that I got to see but I didn't get to participate in, but I just got to be a part of it in that way. But ask them, what was it like to be baptized? And what might it like, be like for me to be baptized? Those are all good questions. And it's important to tell those stories. I'm so glad that you all are here. Some of you, I, am, I look out there and I'm excited about the day when you'll enter the baptismal waters and, we'll, and you'll baptize you'll get baptized wherever that is and we will celebrate you and celebrate the gifts that you bring baptism is a very very special thing and i'm grateful for all those that have entered the waters of baptism and that will be at some point in their lives would you pray with me god so grateful for the ways that you speak to us that you call to us and invite us into a relationship for life with you. As baptism's a part of that, we're grateful for the stories of those who have been baptized, but also for those that will be, for our young people, as they dream and as they wonder about what that time will be like. God, be with all of us this week as we head forward to live out that call that you give to us each and every day each and every moment of our life. Bless and keep us this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'll invite you guys, all of you that have been baptized this week to think about as we share the story and the scripture Mike's going to share here in just a second. 
but invite you to think about your baptism. Where did it happen? What was it like? What do you remember about it? And if you know you have somebody that you can reach out to this week, I invite you to share that story with them, whether it be a grandchild or a child or just a friend. That's a good question this week that you could call somebody and ask, where were you baptized? What was it like? I invited also, uh, if any of you have a good story, give me a call this week. Let me, let's find a time to talk and I'd love to hear your story as well. At this time, I'm gonna invite Mike to unmute himself and to begin um, reading our scripture for the Sunday. Scripture this morning is from Mark 1, <clears throat> verses 4 through 15. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people <clears throat> from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were calling out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. It's the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mike. So I don't know about you, but over the last few weeks, I have been inundated with emails at the beginning of the year from all kinds of people and companies inviting me to think about new things that I take on. It seems like that there are places that continue to challenge me to work out more, find new workout clothing, um, to eat healthier, cleaner, all of this stuff each and every day. One that caught my eye, though, came from the New Church Ministries um, kind of wing of our denomination. This is a place that I've gone to that, is, um, that has done webinars over the last um, few years in which they help pastors to, be, um, to do better and to learn. And so this one caught my eye. New Church Hacks for the new year. Now, what was interesting, these life hacks were things that I think we could all appreciate and maybe learn from. They gave us six to do in this new year. Accept change, block distractions. That meant turning off those notification pings and things like that on our phones and on our computers. Don't multitask, guilty. Embrace technology and read a lot. That means books, news articles, um, maybe take in a podcast or other blogs, those kind of things that feed us, but read a lot. And finally, rest. These are all wonderful things to think about, some things that are, that are important to know and that can maybe help us to be more productive, but also help us in our daily lives each and every day.
What's fascinating is that at the beginning of the year, we get these emails, ways to reflect, ways to grow, and ways to do things in a new kind of fashion, to reevaluate things. Yes, it's because of the um, because of the new year, but it also has to do, I think, with this idea of finding ways to reinvigorate ourselves and to um, pledge new things within the year. It happens at the beginning of each year that we install new officers, that we lit to new leadership for the next year. It's part of our constitution. It's part of what we do. We will install this next week um, and inaugurate a, a new um, administration in Washington, D.C. And also, at the beginning of every year, the second week around there comes this idea of um, this idea of, of Jesus' baptism. And so we get a chance to look at what this means. How this entering into the waters of baptism is a new way of living, a new way of understanding life, a new way of, a new way of recommitting ourselves to our faith. What's interesting is that when you start talking about baptism, though, is that we have, um, when we think about baptism, and we've got this new sense that happens each and every year, one of the things that's fascinating about baptism is that it brings up new questions, even though it happens each and every year. In seminary, it was a, one of the things that seminarians used to always love to argue about. And I find that even in the midst of our daily kind of experiences within the church, that many churches wonder and struggle about baptism and what it means. We have questions about what it was that brought Jesus to the waters of baptism in the first place. Why was it that Jesus felt like that he needed to be baptized by John? If it was for the forgiveness of sin, and we understand Jesus to be that one who was without sin, who was blameless. If that's the case, how do those things work? Why was it that Jesus was baptized? We recognize that baptism was a huge part of the faith back then, of the Jewish faith, but also part of the, the Roman tradition. There were not only baths that were in um, Jerusalem and that we found also in synagogues, ritualistic baths that needed to take, care, take place. We also recognize that those were in other places around the world, that bathing had a ritualistic piece to it. It was part of the community, part of their lives. And here we find John in the middle of the Jordan baptizing people. What does that have to say for Jesus' baptism and also about ours? One of the things that I found is that I have always found baptism to be an outward expression or an outward sign of an inward commitment that we have, a guiding act that we make. I have to admit, though, that within the church, I've been able to see so many things within that moment of baptism that are beautifully mysterious, but also challenging at the same time. One of the things that I found is that I was approached as an associate minister years ago by a family who had a young child, a daughter, that, that had expressed desires to be baptized. And she came to, to me and to some of the leadership and, and expressed that she wanted to be baptized in the church. But she was younger. And the church came back. The leadership got together and discussed whether or not she could be baptized in the church and brought back a decision that she should not be baptized because of her age. Sadly, the family left the congregation and sought a community that would support their daughter in her commitment to follow her faith. 
I saw another piece that I was not a part of, but was one of the most beautiful moments of baptism that I have ever seen. That on a certain Sunday, a father and a son both entered the waters of baptism at the same time. What was fascinating about this and what was so beautiful is that the father was in his 70s and his son who was special needs and had lived with him his entire life, was in his late 50s. And this father and son, who were connected in such a beautiful way, entered the waters of baptism together and were baptized on the same day. So many beautiful things that happen around baptism. And yet also the challenges that we have and struggling to understand exactly what it is. See, the thing is, is that it seems to me to be this beautiful act that has so many different wonderful parts. First and foremost, it is that relationship between the candidate that human being, that person of faith and God, represent, you know, recognizing that relationship is paramount and is so important. And yet we recognize also that that baptismal candidate, that person of faith has a, risk, has a relationship with the church because we are the folks that, that participate with that. We are the ones who, who, who baptize the person into the waters, but we're also the community that supports them, that loves them, that cares about them, and that journeys with them from then on out after that decision is made. And then there is the trust that we have as a community of faith with God, that we work in relationship with God to provide this care and nurture and encouragement, and also this right, this support of this decision of the person of faith. There are words that are said around the baptism. There is, there is a vow that is made, a promise, a commitment. And yet also, what the commitment is to is to a journey that we don't fully understand. And I think that has to be named. See, we've offered up today words within our installation to our church board members, to our elders, and to our deacons. But the reality is, is that the elder, the prayer, or the, um, the, the statements that have been made by these leaders do not encompass all that will be asked of them possibly as we move forward. If you were to ask Marcy what it was that she agreed to two years to be our board chair and what she might have to shepherd us through, I don't think anybody would have expected her to understand that a pandemic was coming or that the ceiling in the sanctuary would fall in or that we would have the challenges that we have had. As we understand when we make a vow, when we make a statement, when we commit to something, we recognize that there is so much more that is out there. If I look back to my own baptism, if I knew now what I knew back then, it's a very different experience. Does it make it any less powerful, any less important? Of course not. What it names is that life brings different understandings. It's about the steps that we take moving from those decisions that are the most important. What's fascinating about the, about the way we follow Jesus, the way we live out our faith, to me, is that in the immediacy right after Jesus' ministry and death and resurrection, there were people that began to tell Jesus' story, communities that began to gather, that began to pop up, that began to seek to follow Jesus. Now, from the very beginnings, they were not called Christians. 
Many times they went by a name of the way. And but this is before the our scriptural narrative had been defined, had been you know put into place with books and, and things like that. That's the very early parts of it. That these people came together seeking relationship, seeking support, and they told stories as they had heard them. And they sought to follow Jesus' example. Now, what's interesting is this became more set as it became more kind of larger and, and, and more widespread Then we needed to have more rules and we needed to have more explanations. And that's when councils and, and groups of leaders got together and systems were put in place to make decisions as to what was right and what was wrong and what was inside of the, the, the faith and what was outside of the faith and who could do what and who could do this and But through it all was the idea of how we as people of faith take each next step. My prayer as we move forward in this next year, as we move forward in this next week and month, next day, that we seek something that is larger, something something that is a spiritual vision for the steps that will come forward. And I believe that the spiritual vision is based on a few things. First, it's based on practices. The way that we live out our lives, the way that we make our way makes a difference. It shapes the way that we go about life and the ways that we live out our call. Some people talk about the fact that we uh, you fake it till you make it, but this is more than that. This is a recognition that our actions also shape what it is that we believe and how we live that out. We lean into the practices of extending grace, mercy, love, peace, Second, spiritual vision is guided by relationship to God, speaking with God. People have talked about the fact that, um, that they don't know how to pray. It's been said to me. The best way to learn how to pray is just to begin speaking. And it may just be one word. It may just be, Lord, be with me. It might just be peace. It may be just whatever it might be. But as we begin to share, as we begin to say those words, the practice, the practice becomes one that takes us forward. It's the next step. Spiritual vision is evaluated by prayer and by conversation. What that means is, is that it's in relationship that we understand our um, our spiritual vision, the things that we see, the things that we experience, the ways that we take our steps, that we talk about them to God, but also to others within the sense of community, within our faith communities. And finally, it's honored by commitment, by the steps that we take. The ways that we move in this world make a difference. So as we move forward now, the question that is extended to each of us is, what will our next steps be? How will we manifest what is inside of us? How will we live it out? If our desire is one to follow Jesus, to understand the call that he has on our lives, we find ways of serving. We find ways of reaching out in love and in compassion and grace, but also in ways in which we speak for those that have no voice. And we do this 
in clumsy first steps, but also in just risking and moving out there. My prayer, my prayer for tomorrow, for this next week, for this next month, for this next year, for each and every step forward, is that we might be guided by a spiritual vision, that we might take it all and go together forward into these next next steps. Amen. How we share our gifts, how we share who we are is our offering. And I think we can see that we recognize that our lives make a difference. And how we share that, how we share all of who we are with God is part of living in relationship with God and within and as part of the people who will bring about God's kingdom. The way that you share your tithes and your offerings, that is part of you. That's part of your work. That's part of your blessing. All of what you have, you share with God. And that makes a difference. We are so grateful. So grateful for the ways that you continue to support these ministries here at church, but also the ways that you support ministries throughout this community and around this world. I invite you this week to consider the ways that you give back and you, the ways that you share the gifts that have been given to you. Would you pray with me? Bathed in the waters of baptism, we are a graced people, O Lord. And as graced people, we recognize the gifts which you have poured out upon us. Recognizing these gifts, we take them and give them back to you, God of the waters, so that others might be bathed in hope, in grace and with joy, and gifted with your peace and love. Receive these, these gifts this day, O Lord. Amen. This table is a place that our steps lead us to, and we are grateful for it. And one of the practices that we have as a church, as a part of the Disciples of Christ denomination, is that we come to this table each and every week. The fact is, we come to this table in different times in our lives. And one week can be so different than another. There are weeks that we come you know, stepping forward, recognizing that we have served in wonderful ways and we find strength here at this table to continue to serve. There are other days that we come to this table beaten down and broken from the world and from the things that we have gone through and we, we seek nothing more than God's consoling, God's comfort, God's grace and love. Sometimes we come recognizing that we are a part of God's family and that we are a blessed child of God. And there are days that we wonder about that. The thing is, is that the invitation is given each and every week. That no matter where you are on your spiritual journey, this table is for you. That when I share the words of institution, they are an extension of this table to you. Just a reminder of the way that you are loved. And I remind you that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, when he gathered with his, with his friends and loved ones in that upper room, that he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to each of them and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And later on in the meal, he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he poured it out. And he said, this cup is a new covenant. poured out for each of you for the forgiveness of sin. And each time we come together, we eat this bread and we drink this cup. But we do so remembering Jesus' life, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, until we share it with him again. Would you pray with me? Sorry, Mike, that's you. 
We pray now that as we turn to the preaching of your word, that we will be drawn closer to you as a result of our understanding of what this celebration is for. We commit it to you and ask that you bless it in every way, in Jesus' way. Amen. Thank you. Let us continue our prayer, praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It has been so good to gather this week, so grateful that you all could join us on this Sunday morning. What a day. Grateful for those that have stepped forward and said that they would help to lead within this congregation for the new year. We continue to pray for them for their leadership, for our deacons, elders, and we continue to look forward to the ways that you will share the faith within this place. No matter where you are, we look forward to hearing how your week went. Um, I look forward to hearing stories of baptism. You can send them to me or find a way to reach out. Love to hear those and looking forward to that this week. Go in peace and take care of yourselves and know that you are loved. Amen. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.